Café International is a board game that was released in 1989. It sold over a million copies, done very well for itself, so 30 years later we've now got a digital version that's been released on PC and Steam. This review is broken into two segments. The first segment will be about how this game works, because I'd never come across it before until I got hold of a copy of this game. And in the second half I'm going to talk about the translation from a physical board game to a digital one, and some of the things that I expect to see, some of which are here and some of which are not. So. How do you play Café International? For Café International, you've got 12 tables seated with four chairs at each. Each table has a nationality flag on it, and so does each of the characters in your character card pile that you have in the top right-hand side of the screen, and you'll always have five. A round in Café International sees you lay up to two cards down and they must seat at a table of their nationality and they must be either a male and female together or a male and female that keeps the numbers of the table at parity or one just above the other because you kind of have to lay down something first. The idea is that when you then get a table that's seated with four people at it, which will always be two men and two women, you will then clear the table, it will be removed from the deck, and then the next table lays down. As you can see just below the character um, faces on the top right hand side of the screen, you've got the amount of character cards that are left, and that starts at 100 and goes down to zero, and if you manage to seat them all then the game is over. If you run out of tables, which I have to say is usually how my games would end, um, because you've got, I think it's 12 tables to start with, mm -hmm. Uh, and then another 12 that can be placed in. Once all of those tables are gone, the next table that then gets filled and removed signals the end of the game. However, with Cafe International, because you're limited with the five cards that you've got playing at any one time, and you can only lay down up to two at once, quite often you find yourself in a situation where you can't actually place anyone down. And that's because of not only the nationality side of things, but it's more often than not that you need to have this gender um, equality. I guess I'm, <laughs> that's probably a better way of saying that. But it's, um, you must have, like, if you've got a, a woman from America, there's already a woman from America sitting at that table, then you can't place down that woman. And so what you'd need to do, if you can see in the top left hand side of the screen, you've got this bar where you then dump the cards that you can't play. And you need to strategically work out what tables have already cleared, because then you won't necessarily want to keep those cards about any longer because they're not going to be needed. So there's a strategy to placing um, your characters at the bar. When you place the characters at the bar, as you can see, that then lowers your score. And the idea of this is that as you seat people and clear tables, you score for each table that they interact with. And as you can see, quite a lot of the chairs overlap. And so quite often you'll be scoring multiple points from multiple tables. And what you can do is clear two tables at once. And if you're really clever, you can clear three at once. But I have to say that comes few and far between. That is all that the game has to offer. And although included in this digital edition you have a solitaire mode, which is about um, maximising all of your cards that come through and getting the highest score on your own possible, as well as there being a time attack mode, which scores every turn that you take up against a 60 second clock, the actual game stays the same. There's no particular variance to it. Thankfully, with Cafe International, you've got... Um, up to three AI that you can have in at three levels of difficulty and what I would say with this is that they are challenging but a huge element of Cafe International comes down to luck and this is kind of where I sit on the fence with this game. There is so much out of your control because A, obviously all of the flags are randomised but you've only got five cards that you can play with, which is a really limited and small pool of characters. And so the other way how you can have the game end is when the bar gets full on the top left hand side. And it's either the tables get full or the bar gets full. We never end up, and each time that I've played this game so far, actually clearing all of the character cards. 
because invariably you'll get stuck potentially with three or four cards where the nationalities aren't even on the tables and even then you won't necessarily have male and female at the same time and be able to place them down and so the amount of cards that you drop in these games is ridiculous and so it feels quite wasteful and then when you get something you kind of go oh luck yay pass it off a skill <laughs> and then drop it down wherever you are i think the key with this game though is recognizing your opportunities and using the strategy to place them down in ways that can try and open up uh, your future moves potentially and keeping an eye on remembering what tables have been cleared so that you discard the right cards the other kind of interesting quirk, and I'm not sure if I like it or don't like it, is that when you're playing up against other players through Steam Remote Play, because there's no online with this, um, or you're playing up against AI, you can see what all of the cards that they have down the bottom left hand side of the screen. And that takes away a little bit of the element of mystery, but it also adds a little bit more strategy to it as well, because you can see where they're going or, or the options that they have to place down stuff on the table. So I'm kind of miffed, but also find it makes me take longer to take my turn because I can see all of the strategic options played out. And that kind of means that you can dive in before someone else if you've got a similar card and you thought, oh, I'll play that later. Um, and that does happen, but because of the high level of luck with Cafe International, actually I would say that you're normally forced into playing that move anyway because you've only ever usually got one move that you can make out of the five cards. So yeah, a bit of a weird one. I think it would also be remiss of me to say a couple of things about the digital version of the game. It has blatantly been made for mobile first and then ported over to PC. The instructions have things like tap the screen and things like that. It feels quite lazy in the port over. There's no options aside from choosing the three AI and naming them. And although Steam Remote Play does work and it works perfectly fine, um, having the ability to do some kind of asynchronous matches with online people would have been a really low cost and simple and easy way to have this game up and running with an online feature. Apparently online is going to come later on down the line, but it's not here at launch. I also wanted to bring to attention the fact that the artwork is very 1989. And by that I mean that each of the nationalities has a almost spitting image slash news column caricature style that I think has aged really poorly. In the age of quote unquote woke culture, I think a lot of people will find this game offensive or go out of their way to find this game offensive. Um, but what I would say in repost to that is that every nation is sent up in its own way. So everyone is treated like a caricature. But what I do think is remiss of the game is that when you get this digital update, you have the opportunity to make things less caricaturist uh, and therefore you could have the option of having I don't know a modern updated version of the different nationalities or the flags or whatever um, having different varieties to choose from would have been quite nice um, and because this is so bare bones and basic and what they've then done is lean into the 1989 caricatures with really cringeworthy sound effects from all of the different nations I feel like, I don't know, tonally, it's not very 2021 and some people will take umbrage with that. The reason why I wanted to raise this was that although I personally didn't find this particularly offensive because everyone sent up and if you're going to send up people, you need to send up everyone and do it equally. When I played this with some people who were younger than me, they felt uncomfortable, some people playing this, whereas some other people just didn't care and found it funny. So I think it's really down to personal taste. That being said though, no one that I've played this game with has given it an overwhelming, glowingly positive review. It feels quite basic. Everyone comments on how luck based it feels and everyone comments on the quickness of having to discard things all the time. So yeah, this is a, 
a lukewarm tentative recommendation if you want to go back in time to a heavily luck based strategy board game or if you've gotten some nostalgia for Cafe International then um, go for it but be aware that this has been built for mobile first there's no online or asynchronous gameplay um, yes you can play up against bots and a mixture of human AI and bots and that's all well and good and there's a couple of additional like solo modes that you can muck about with but it does feel like a bare bones simplistic port to begin with a written review will be over on higherplanegames.com until then you guys take care bye bye Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higherplanenetwork. Your support makes all the difference, and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.